Which Side Podcast is a proud member of the Which Side Media Collective. This week, we don't have a sponsor. No. So, in lieu of a sponsor, write a prisoner. You can go to whichsidepodcast.com slash prisoners, and you can get a list of places to write and people to write. Do that. Let us know if you write a prisoner. Uh, we'll, we'll give you a shout out for writing a prisoner because, you know, everyone needs to be doing it. If you'd like to sponsor an episode, you could do so by donating at least $10. That's how much it costs us to produce each episode for you each week. That's all we ask, and we will be your shield. We'll save pretty much anything. So go to wishsidepodcast.com. <laughs> This is episode 104. Yeah, we have Marissa Miller on. She's the director of Vegucated. One of like the best educational, you know, um, documentaries out there. I, I think it, it takes a, a different approach than a lot of some of the other documentaries. Not that any of the documentaries are bad. Just this has a slightly different approach. So if you, you know, shove down some of the other documentaries down your family's throats, this one might be the one that makes them change. Works for Jordan. Yeah, it's the only one that actually got my mom to go vegetarian finally. Um, and I think that's a lot to do with the fact that it's a little lighthearted. It's not so um, graphic animal violence in your face. It doesn't shy away from it. It doesn't. No. But... Um, I think a lot of things like Earthlings and such like that, mm -hmm. while very impactful and um, super, super relevant, they can come on a little strong for some people. Yeah, and we talk about that further mm -hmm. in episodes. Do you have any yeah. news and events this week, Jordan? Uh, yeah, we have the Million Mask March coming up. Um, you should check your remember, local... Remember. That's what you do. And you should check local area for any protests that might be going on if there aren't you should organize your own i know that there's a main one going on in washington dc um but there are plenty of branching blah ba doo ba da ba doots so check it out google is your friend this week i'm gonna do something a little bit different we're gonna do a birthday for the same shot this week in 1875 on november the 8th Hu jin was born you familiar with, with Q? Yeah, it's a uh, Chinese feminist revolutionary, right? She was, yeah. She was actually beheaded for a failed uprising um, in the early 1900s. So, happy birthday coming up. If you like these every week, I pull them out of the Slingshot Personal Organizer. You can get one yourself. Any local info shop will have it. Or if you don't have a local info shop, you can get it on an online info shop like AK Press. Amen. I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side are you on? Which side? Which side are you on? 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 Hey Hello. there. How's it going? It's going pretty well. How are you? Doing good. So I'm Jordan. And I'm Jeremy. Hi, Jordan and Jeremy. How's it going? Uh, how's the morning been for you? It's not morning anymore. It's afternoon. It's been, a, it's been a really, really nice day, actually. It was nice. I was just playing t-ball with my toddler outside and... I'm feeling lazy, so we're ordering in some vegan Thai food and oh, yum. doing this podcast. Oh, you man. Got, I want Thai food now. I know. We have Sloppy Joe's cooking in a crock pot, and I'm like, hmm, but Thai food sounds delicious. But you know what? There's a place for Sloppy Joe's, and uh, you know, I think fall is a good Sloppy Joe season, so <laughs> well chosen. I don't think I've had Sloppy Joe's in years. <laughs> we chose it because we're carving pumpkins later tonight. Okay. Yeah. 
Oh, fun. How so, fun are you guys? Very folly, you know. <laughs> Have you decided on your design, on your face or your design on the pumpkin? Um, no, I really give it to my daughter and say, do what you want and be, as, you know, so she does it. And yeah, I let her. How old, is, how old is she? She turns eight on Halloween. Oh, wow. So she's almost oh, eight. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. How cute. So eight, she can actually do it now. At eight, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She can do it. Now. Yeah. So we, we just kind of sit back there and make sure she doesn't cut off a finger. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> so, and do yeah. you bake the seeds or do they go in the compost? How does that work? Uh, about half, half and half usually. Okay. Yeah. All right. Nice. So just to start out, I want to say that Vegucated was the movie that finally made my mom go vegetarian. After, no way. Yeah, after... I don't know, what is it, like 16, 17 years of me trying to and, show her thing yeah, and yeah. thing. <laughs> Vegucated's the one that did it. You were oh, just too big of an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> me? Yeah, 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 I was. I was not. Both. No, you know what it is? It's families can't just take the information in on their own. They take it through the filter of you and the role you play in the family and what they think of you and this or that situation. So... <laughs> Family can be the hardest of all. Mm-hmm. It, it was really interesting. I remember um, after she watched it, she actually asked me a question. She was like, hey, it, is that really true about the chickens? I'm like, yeah, it's really true. And that's what did it for. Her. Just mm-hmm. that, wow. that. So it's really interesting, like, what, what will finally will hit people with it? You probably get these stories all the time, though. I, well, I was, I, you know, it's funny because I, I, I have heard that, like, John Sackars, um, you know, from Canada, he... Mm-hmm. He said that the same thing happened with his sister. And he is like the biggest in your face vegan I think I've ever met. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You know? And I was like, really? Wow. Okay. That's great. Yeah. We, yeah, we had him on. Uh, yeah. He's, a, he's definitely in your face. Yeah. So how many of these stories do you actually get all the time? Like, is it kind of a, does it ever feel like almost overwhelming? You know, it's, it is starting to slow down because, well, it's been three years now Uh since we released the film, but I'm going to say, yeah. And well, once the film hit digitally, so during our, our theatrical release and then through the DVD release, and then finally, um, once it hit Netflix, it was like, whoa. I mean, it was just, it was so many stories. You can go onto our website. If you go to get um, I think it's like about the movie and then it's, I think it's like um, testimonials or lives changes called lives change. That's the page. And, uh, and you can read, but that's just even a small fraction. That's just, those are the ones that I just sent to our, you know, webmaster and said, put this up, put this up. Um, You know, and I do wonder how many people stick with the veg, you know, if they're at first inspired, whether they stick with it or not. And that's why, Um, having support, social support, familial support is absolutely key. So, you know, you're without you there, say your mom watched, you know, watched the movie and decide she wanted to go vegetarian, but you weren't around. Would she be able to, you know, stick with it? I don't know. Yeah. So it's awesome that she has that support network. She's pretty damn stubborn. So she might. (laughs) (laughs) And you you say that the DVD release was about three years ago. The, let me see. What are we? October. Um, actually, this was the theatrical release. Yes, was Octo- yeah September October of 2011. Then the DVD came out um, right around the holidays. Yeah, because yeah. I bought the DVD and you borrowed it like right away, right when it came available. That's yeah. That's the you bought it and yeah. she watched it and that's what did it. So she's awesome. been vegetarian since. Amazing. Now just to get her to go vegan. <laughs> oh. Yeah, older folks, I mean, parents, there's that's hard, the vegan thing. Unless they get slammed with heart disease or something like that. Sometimes, you know, that can be harder for older folks. See, and my parents are just like the they're that crazy old school where they've seen everything. Um, I mean, I've been vegan for over twenty years now. And they've seen every they've seen Vegucate, they've seen every goddamn video out there, and they're just like, Yep, I don't care. It's amazing, isn't it? It mm-hmm. drives me insane. I know. I know. Me too. Me too. So what, what is your origin story? Like what brought you to veganism and to, to activism? Well, I was, I'm Unitarian Universalist and I was 
uh, at coffee hour after church one Sunday and a little old English lady came up to me and she, you know, she kept hosting these horrible sounding film screenings. Like she would say, um, would you like to see the cow at my table? And I was like, <laughs> no, I do not No. And then, um, finally she came up to me and she said, would you like to see we're all Noah? You know, we're having a screening. And I was like, Oh, well, that sounds harmless. We are all Noah. It was not harmless at all. It was <laughs> horrifying and, you know, life changing. And I had the aha moment of, oh, my God, I have to, I have to go vegetarian. But um, there at the screening um, was Mary Max. She ended up being my colleague and the executive producer of the documentary. But at the time, I didn't know that. Um, and she was acting to me like a kooky vegan. I was like, oh, my God, I never want to be that kooky vegan. And then. <laughs> When I was there, uh, I picked up some literature. One was 101 Reasons Why I'm Vegetarian by Pam Rice. And I just brought that with me on a plane flight home to Indiana. I was going to surprise my mom. Um, it was my birthday, and I went home for my birthday to surprise her. And um, I was reading it on the plane, and by the time I landed, I was like, okay, that's it. I'm done. I'm vegan. And she, when I landed and told her that, she was like, Oh God, are you going to be one of those plastic shoe wearing radicals? And I said, no, <laughs> mom, I'm not. And of course I am. Of course I am. Um, and then she actually went, she's mostly vegetarian now. She's pretty much vegetarian now um, herself, which is cool. But uh, yeah, that was, that was basically it. And it was, it was for the animals. I mean, I've always been an environmentalist, but it's so that, that doesn't hurt, but is for the animals. So is is that kind of what led you to make your um, documentary like less threatening? Because I feel like it's one of the ones out there that it's just not um, it's not an all animal blood and guts. It's definitely way different. Mm -hmm. And so well, it's yeah, I appreciate that. Um, I went around before I decided to make this film, I used to go around the country and, you know, this New York area and organize screenings of other people's vegetarian and vegan films and animal rights kind of films. And so I saw what worked. I saw what didn't. I saw that humor really went far in terms of keeping AIS, which I call asses in seats, keeping <laughs> asses and um, provoking an, a non-defensive discussion afterwards so humor is important also not being too uh yeah not just getting over the top with the graphic stuff which isn't to say that this graphics does, doesn't happen i mean we know that this is what i show in vegetated is the tip of the iceberg mm -hmm. but i you know i i tested this out i started a um i joined a, a filmmakers collective and they were super helpful in helping me hone the tone and even just choosing the words that I was going to use and how much of this imagery and how much of that um, to make it more palatable and make it at the end of the day more effective so that people could take in the message and not just sit there and be traumatized and defensive. Yeah. And, and, and I think it was super effective because the, the one that did it for my mom was the, the duck in the chicken scene and so right oh wow and that was very very brief in that yeah you know, it, it's really funny because that was the first thing i noticed about the film as soon as i got the dvd i sat down and watched it and then as soon as i finished it my wife got home and i'm like you have to watch this because this is what will make everyone in our lives that's not vegan go vegan and we watched it again so i watched it twice back to back oh wow <laughs> yeah that's and amazing. so it, it it just had that sense from other documentaries that you didn't get. It was very personal, that, that personalized aspect where you, you follow these three people through their actual struggles, not just mm -hmm. you need to make this choice. It's you need to make this choice. And yeah, these are the steps along the way. And this is what's hard. And this is how we ended up at the end. And it's OK to be on your own journey. Thank you. Yeah, I, that's that was really important to me because, you know, you can hammer people over the head with information, but you kind of have to show them how to do it. And you have to show them it's so we are human, you know, it's okay to be honest about your struggle. Um, and it's okay that not everybody 
ends up in the same spot at the same time. Everybody has their own process with it and their own challenges. So, um, you know, it was, it was interesting because, you know, obviously as an activist at the end, I wanted everybody to be a hundred percent vegan, mm-hmm. but as a filmmaker and a storyteller and as a human being on planet earth, I was like, Oh, well actually maybe it's good that they all kind of land in different places so that people who are watching it, who don't feel like they can go hundred percent vegan right away, at least feel, well, okay, I can do that. I can do, I can do vegetarian. Or I can do mostly vegan or something like that. So as a, yeah, as a storyteller filmmaker, I was like, okay, this, you know, this is okay. Did you ever get any pushback from other animal rights activists at the time saying like, you're not showing the horrors enough or anything like that? Um, not really. No, I was surprised. I was pleasantly surprised, but what I was, what I was, I continue to be so frustrated with is people who see the film and they discount everything in the film because I point out that Oreos are vegan. I don't say (laughs) Oreos are health food. I don't say vegans should (laughs) nourish themselves on, you know, Oreos. I just say Oreos are a vegan option. Um, And I show some convenient foods. I do um, include some soy meats and so forth. And people, the anti-soy people um, go ballistic. And there's a lot of misconceptions around soy, um, which are just so frustrating. (laughs) But but if you also, if you don't want to consume soy, that's fine too. So I want to make another film, but this one, I will include the soy issue in this one. Um, but in a, in a way that says, okay, yeah, you don't, you don't have to, you don't have to eat soy if you don't want to. I know a lot of vegans who don't, I don't digest it particularly well. So, um, so that is what I'm getting the most pushback on in the whole entire film. Is that, do you get that pushback that you find when they're like, oh, but the soy issue, they kind of discredit everything else in it because of that oh, one yeah. issue? Oh, yeah. Oh, or just the fact that I show Oreos at all. <laughs> or there are some like, people were drinking beer in the last party scene. That's <laughs> healthy. That has gluten in it. Now you're just going crazy. I know. <laughs> I, I love it when people find out that I'm not vegan for health reasons because don't look in my cupboard because guess what? There's Oreos in my cupboard right now. Sorry, guys. Because <laughs> they're Halloween ones. I mean, come on. It's oh, orange so frosting. Fun. How the so hell can you say fun. no to that? Yeah. Do you know what I have in my freezer? I have so delicious candy corn ice creams on a stick. I what? haven't heard of those. I've never even heard that of those. That sounds delicious. Oh, yeah. Well, see, we're lucky because So Delicious was one of our cor- corporate sponsors. Awesome. So about every four months, I get a shipment of whatever's new. And in this shipment, they sent me some coconut whip, which is yummy. And they also they sent me some, some coconut nog and some coconut peppermint chocolate milk. And they sent me some of these. Uh, it was, yeah, one is a candy corn you know, popsicle thing. Mm. Um, and the other one is a pumpkin spice latte ice cream thing. They're oh, both good. That sounds so good. Yeah, but... my toddler my toddler loved them. <laughs> I, I mean this in the nicest way possible, but I totally hate you right now. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> You're getting nog before it's seasonal. I and... know it. I know it. <laughs> oh, that's so good. That's something I this is one of those few things I've looked forward to every year when they started making different you know uh, vegan nogs oh god i love them do you have a favorite brand or or kind every year we buy every one we can find and because the last couple years they've been a whole bunch of new Mm -hmm. ones um i'm liking the coconut ones lately they're yeah they're pretty good yeah yeah and do Um, you do them hot like do you warm them up or just do them straight you know from the fridge i do them both okay yeah my my family's always added like half half milk, half nog. It's like a diluted form of it. Mm-hmm. No, that's a good because it can be sweet, can mm-hmm. it? Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so I've kind of just always done that myself. Just half like soy milk, half nog. It's amazing how your taste change way it changes as you get older, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like My... You used to, you know, I used to just eat like candy, and yeah. now I have like a bite of candy. I'm like, oh. Like, that's good, but I don't need any more. I'm yeah. done. <laughs> I, I knew I was getting old when I was like, oh, yeah, that cake's too sweet for me. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you crave things like olives and you're like, oh God, I'm like <laughs> a old man. Like, what's happening? Why do I want olives right now. Why do I want broccoli? That's not. <laughs> So what's your secret, you know, vegan junk food indulgence that you're almost embarrassed to say? Mm. I mean, I acknowledged I have Halloween Oreos in my cupboard, so. (laughs) Well, I have, you know what? I made a big sheet cake for my son's second birthday, which was last weekend. And it's 11 and a half by 15 and a half. That's a big cake. That's a big cake. And at the party, there were like, you know, eight kids there or something. And toddlers don't eat that much. (laughs) So I was left with all of this cake. And I'm going to tell you, it was a Thomas the Tank Engine cake. And I am left with like Thomas's face and part of Percy's one eye. (laughs) And that's it. I ate the rest. (laughs) It was awesome. I did Issa's buttercream uh frosting it's just mm. so good it's just oh. sugar it's just it's it's pretty bad it's just earth balance shortening and powdered <laughs> sugar it's the best. You need. yeah <laughs> yeah i i am uh, a huge cake person i will sometimes my wife will just show up and she's like why'd you make a cake i'm like why not yeah. <laughs> oh baking so much more fun than cooking i think are you are you in the baking camp or the cooking camp I, i'm in the cooking camp Okay. I do but, all the cooking and baking in my house, so uh, I do both. I, I, don't, I'm I not just really feel like. What do you enjoy? What are you most excited about? I am most excited about eating cake. Yeah. <laughs> it's not the cooking it, it's, it's the eating it. Oh, I love it. Like, my husband and I will be, you know, kind of falling asleep at night, you know, we'll be in bed and, you know, finish talking, and then I'll just go, cupcakes. <laughs> And I'll be like, oh, shut up. I just, I have such a sweet tooth. All I want is cookies and cupcakes and yeah. Oh, and here's another indulgence. Also, I always have chocolate chips in the cupboard and I put them way, way high up and in the back so that I can't get to them with the idea that I, that will actually prevent me from, you know, actually reaching in there. And it doesn't, I just end up with bruised knees from crawling up on the counter reaching way up high (laughs) that leads me to like one of my secret things that i have in my house is i always have enough ingredients on hand to make two double batches of chocolate chip cookies (laughs) oh man you you is there anything better than a just from the oven chocolate chip cookie and i'd have to say jeremy's chocolate chip cookies are like the best thing that i've ever tasted okay will you promise to send me the recipe who's, no who's is it? Is it no I'm, I'm dead serious no he I, doesn't tell anybody I this recipe. don't tell anyone the recipe no it's actually my mom's recipe that she changed from her mom um which is okay this is a little long story on this recipe it's it's an adaptation from a betty crocker recipe from 1941 oh i love it yeah <laughs> It's not healthy at all. It's like the most unhealthy goddamn recipe. I wonder in the world. if Annie Shannon did that one. So, hmm. do you think Annie Shannon veganized that in her Betty Crocker book? I don't know because I know Betty Crocker in the mid '40s completely changed all their recipes to take out. Um, they use less sugar and less shortening. Oh, hmm. oh, oh! So, yeah. Well, I'll just I'll have to look in Annie's book and see. If she <laughs> So I'll give variations of the recipe out, but there's like two things in there my mom actually won't let me tell people. It's like her little secret. Got it. And it really, like they're fine without them, but it really puts them over the edge of like, oh, okay. Wow. I know. I, I feel really bad. Like I tell people no all the time. I don't hear anything else. I just, about, and I just want to sit here and try to figure it out, but I won't. <laughs> And what's funny is like, so a double batch of this recipe is eight dozen, by the way, it's an eight dozen cookie recipe. Oh my gosh. So I have enough to make, you know, 16 dozen cookies at any time. And then what do you do with 16 dozen cookies? Eat them. No, this is the truth. I don't eat the cookies. I'll eat the dough right afterwards, like as I'm making them. But then I like, I really honestly love to share the cookies. I'm that crazy guy who will randomly show up at my neighbor's house and be like, here's a dozen vegan chocolate chip cookies. And they're like, why do you keep bringing us these cookies? (laughs) I want to be your neighbor. Why are they complaining? <laughs> That's the yeah. real question. I've never received a complaint, but I know they must be like 
this is weird. Like he just brings it's just because I I love to cook. Because don't they all have eleven children where you are? Yes, Yes, they do. Yes, they do. Yeah, yeah. 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 They need all the help they can get. (laughs) No, but uh, when it comes to cooking, making those those chocolate chip cookies, that is definitely a pleasure. Like the making part, that's a a pure pleasure. Mm. See, I I just feel like I I fail a lot when it comes to baking, like. I don't know what it is. And we have two vegan bakeries here in Utah. And so I'm just lazy. And I just, <laughs> if I want it's cheesecake, I'll go get a slice of cheesecake. I can't make it. <laughs> well, it's chemistry, isn't it? I mean, yeah. it's really, you have to be really precise. Especially with baking. Like with cooking, I feel like I, 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 I can just eye things and it's yeah. fine. And, and taste them. But mm-hmm. you can't really taste baking powder. Exactly. Yeah. If you, I've, accidentally used way too much where you can taste it <laughs> you uh, you what i've used way too much where you can taste it <laughs> oh boy and that's never good no that was it's, that is never good <laughs> so you said you have, you have a he's a newly two-year-old right yeah how how has that been you know so far for you so far it hadn't it hasn't been too bad he's um you know we're god when people say where do you live when i'm talking to a vegan um, I say, oh, between uh, Peace Food and Juice Press. Um, so I'm between, mm-hmm. and I used to be between Peace Food and Blossom Cafe. So between two vegan, like on the block, you know, between two vegan <laughs> restaurants. Um, now uh, Blossom moved like three blocks north. So, so, so I still am between Peace Food and Blossom, but uh, <laughs> just in a slightly different direction. But anyway, I'm we're super lucky. I mean, we have on the you know, we have juice press, we have organic Avenue, which is all vegan. And we have peace food, um, cafe. I mean, this is all within, yeah, one block, one block. And we have candle cafe. I mean, it's just, it's so easy. And you really don't have an excuse in New York to raise your kid vegan. Um, well, I guess there are parts of New York, obviously the Bronx would be tough and, you know, parts of Queens or whatever, but here it's so easy. Um, now I am finding as my toddler gets older that uh we're having a little bit of a power struggle over veggies. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just because they're vegan doesn't mean they'll love vegetables. So um I'm trying to strike a balance between offering him new foods to introduce his palate to new things mm-hmm. and providing him with foods that I know he'll eat and love and get the nutrition that he needs. So, you know, it's, you know, with, with kids, you can't, you can't explain this to them, you yeah, know, yeah. nutrition very easily with little bitty ones. An eight year old, they get it more, but you know, you're just like, you know, you can't eat toast every day. <laughs> you can't, <laughs> I know you want to. I, so- I feel super lucky when my daughter was about two, her food cravings that she always demanded, it was broccoli, asparagus, and avocados. Are you kidding me? No. And so like I tell people that and that's what I get all the time. Like I, it was never an issue. (laughs) Oh man, I'm so jealous. Now, Gabriel is great with certain things. He will request avocado. Mm -hmm. He goes, he goes bonkers over like plant-based healthy snack foods. He loves pickles. Mm -hmm. He loves olives and he loves seaweed. You know that nori, those like sea Mm -hmm. snacks or whatever. Yeah. He loves that stuff. You know, he'll munch on goji berries and um, hummus and carrots and green pepper. That's raw with hummus. I mean, he, you know, he will do that. And we'll go to the green market and he'll eat, you know, a lentil wrap. Um, so so he, he does. But just if I put a plate of pasta with broccoli in it, he will so carefully separate the pasta from the broccoli. That's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> but he'll eat, you know, if I make a cilantro, basil and kale pesto, he'll eat the noodles with that all, you know, on it. Mm-hmm. So I have to, unfortunately, what this means is if he sees big chunks of cooked vegetables, he kind of will steer away from them. Mm-hmm. But if I mince them up tiny in a casserole or something like that, or in a burger, you know, patties of, you know, something like that, then he'll, then he'll eat it. You know, he'll be more likely to eat it. So that means just a lot of cooking for me. I mean, I, I know some moms who just heat up some peas and carrots 
and plop them on in front of their kids and their kids are like, nom, nom, nom. And, you know, my kid is like, Bleh, where's the noodles? You know, so <laughs> I feel like my daughter is a better vegan than me than most times. Like uh, last night, give you an instance, we got home super, super late because we're at a party. She's like, I'm really hungry. I'm like, I'll let me just grab you these fruit snacks real quick. She's like, Dad, that's unhealthy. I'm like, <laughs> that's, that's, I, I don't care if it's unhealthy. Let's just go to bed. It's really late. She's like, no, I, I need something healthy. I'm like, oh my God. Like, what do you want? And she's like, do we have any kale chips? I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> kale chips. Wow. Oh my, oh my God. Just... Kale chips over. Your job is done. Your job is done. Well, except it makes it hard for yeah. me because I am not a healthy vegan. Like, I am, I'm vegan for the animals. Like, the health aspect is totally the bonus on the, the back end. Right, right. Yeah. Especially well, that's with... good. She's, you know, Getting you out your comfort zone and probably inspiring you to eat a little bit healthier yourself. No, it's true. It's that's totally true. It's just like you get home and you don't want to spend forty minutes baking kale chips. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Gabriel <laughs> likes kale chips, but he's kind of picky. Like he will only eat ter- the ones from Terry, which is you know kind of a fast food place in Chelsea. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah, and he won't drink my green juice, but he'll drink the twelve dollar one from around the corner <laughs> <laughs> with the exact same ingredients. Same ingredients. <laughs> you know, my friends are like, you should just get the you know get the Organic Avenue bottle and put your stuff in it. So yeah. I should try that. But um, <laughs> that's great. So she's been how long has she been vegan for? Conception amazing yeah amazing and what's that like in in salt lake city a lot better than you would imagine so yeah, we're actually pretty lucky yeah we actually have a really good uh vegan community here um she goes to a charter school here and she's not the only vegan which makes it great so oh that's fantastic yeah yeah it's, it's a a lot less worrisome than than i would have expected um we had one problem at the hospital when she was born that uh, I almost got thrown out of the hospital for, <laughs> um, but that that was pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah, I'm I'm ex- I'm a little bit wary. You know, he's he's just in little baby classes, and he's in this little pro two's class where they have snack, and then every day I have to ask them what they're having for snack, and you know, and that's it's manageable. We've never had any issues with that. But then when once lunch comes along, I'm like. Okay, you know, I'm sure it'll work out, but they're really, really very careful about peanut and seed allergies here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you just have, you can't bring, you know, nuts and seeds here. And I'm like, wow, you know, Gabriel doesn't love beans. He'll eat hummus, but I can't even feed him hummus because that has tahini in it, which has sesame seeds. So, hmm. um, so there is, I'm, I'm just praying that Solutionary School will open up here. Uh, do you know about that? It's no. Zoe Weil's uh. school. Yeah. So Zoe Weil, who is the mother of the modern hum- humane education movement, is um, starting um, to put together an amazing team of faculty and fundraisers and, you know, marketers and People to um, get the solutionary school started, which will be, I believe, K through 12, um, a school that will be based on the principles of creating kids who are, you know, come with come up with creative solutions to the world's problems and aren't just stressed out test takers. You know, they're actually, you know, they're it's going to be a rigorous academic curriculum, but it will also be. Um, you know, grounded in the principles of the Institute for Humane Education, which means, you know, trying to make the world a better place for people and Mm -hmm. animals and the planet. So um, if, you know, I'm, it seems like it's really going to happen, but they do need to raise millions of dollars. Uh, Mm -hmm. I don't know where they're going to get that, especially since a lot of vegans don't have children. So they're not sort of in that headspace or you know so mm-hmm. their donations yeah. and their activism isn't really with children in the children's sphere so um i'm hoping to once gabriel's in school more and i have more time be able to chip away at that demographic a little bit more um you know to get families less afraid of raising their kids vegan and vegetarian and really focus my outreach you know in with families yeah, we did a lot of research on um, the schools out here. So 
we found it was the only um, program that she's in a program called the IB or International Baccalaureate Program. And it, it's very similar to like what you're saying, but it's not quite as progressive. It's the most progressive we have out here. So what does that mean? So it's they teach uh, certain values that they have to do. So like they have to do um, it's like there's, I think there's eight different values that they learn above the normal curriculum. Um, and it's all about how you interact with each other in society and how you make society a better place, basically. Oh, that's great. So, yeah. So we're we're lucky that we have at least one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So what will the lottery be like for that? It's it's insane because it's a lottery system to get into charter schools. Oh, right. Schools. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were lucky we got in. Um, I know on our lottery, because when she got in kindergarten, there was 50 slots total for three kindergarten classes. <laughs> And they had just shy of 2,500 applicants. What? Yeah. Yeah, I've heard of some lotteries where parents actually put their kids in it um, while they're still years in advance. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Before the child's even born. (laughs) In some cases. Well, we're in the the crazy preschool application process in New York City. Mm -hmm. And um, we had applied to a little preschool that had a lottery just for them to read the essays that you painstakingly spent two hours writing to get your kid into the school. And it's, you know, it's like, what are your kids strengths? Like, what does your child enjoy doing? I'm like, I'm like community organizing and reading Nietzsche. What do you think? <laughs> you know, he's blowing bubbles and running around the hall going, ah! <laughs> yeah, it was, it blew me away that like the assessments that we had to do to get her into the school too. Like it was the same thing. I'm just like, they're little fucking kids. I know. <laughs> oh, my God. It's insane. It's insane. But I'm glad that that exists. And, you know, great that you got in. Is that until 12th grade or till 8th no, grade? No, it's fifth through grade? Uh, 8th grade. 8th grade. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I bet if a parent said something like, well, they're really into Chomsky. Like, they might just eat that shit up anyway. <laughs> <laughs> they're really into Chomsky. You know? I, I read them to it b- before bed every night. Really this is, this is hilarious. You, you, you might like this. Just You brought up Chomsky and, and brought this. My daughter, once a month, they send home like all the work that she had done for that previous month in, in class so we can review it. And we were going through it the other day, and one of them, there was a a citizen commitment. It was like how to be a good citizen and they had to fill in their own rules. And her rules went be an anarchist, be vegan. Oh my God. <laughs> Did you take a picture of that? Yeah. yeah, I did. I yeah. Oh of it. good, good. Because that's gotta go in a scrapbook and that's gotta go on Facebook and <laughs> that's amazing. And, and like Jeremy and I both identify as anarchists, but I don't think I've ever seen Jeremy push like anarchism or anything mm-hmm. like that and so it just well, they're, they're little sponges i yeah. mean they get it you don't have to say it they get yeah. it yeah it, it, it's crazy it's all fun but it's you really you you mentioned that a lot of vegans don't choose to procreate um yeah. have you gotten a lot of flack for it um a little bit yeah you know i got the stink eye from various activists at various conferences sure how, how do but you I, react to that oh you know in my head i have um you know very well thought out and very snappy and witty responses <laughs> two hours after the interaction has taken place. <laughs> but well, during I'm the sorry. interaction, I'm like, <sighs> you know, cause you know what? They're right. You know what? They're right. Actually, they're actually right in a way, you know, but on the other hand, having a kid is the most mind blowing love affair you can have with anyone ever. And, you know, it's so cliche to say it's my heart outside of my body, but it is. <laughs> and if you don't, you know, you don't have that experience, you know, that's, that's a basic human experience. And, you know, I have a lot of admiration for people who ethically say, I'm not going to do this because my ethics are stronger than my own wishes and needs and desires. So I have a lot of respect for that. But by the same token, I do think there's a huge uh, market to be kind of cold about it um, that the vegan community is totally missing Mm -hmm. because um, people who are not yet vegan or who, or who are, you know, vegan curious, but who have kids are like, 
I people, you know, I can't do this. Who does this? So if they don't know other vegan families, they won't have a model. They won't have go tos. It'll just, it's just scarier, and it'll be hard. And also, they don't have time. They don't have time to go to this screening or that action or that event. No, they're going to be stuck in, you know, PTA meetings and, <laughs> you know, just so that so it's just or you know baseball games or something. So I feel like, you know, the ideal is people who want to want to be parents should adopt. Yes, of course they Mm -hmm. should. Is it going to happen? I hope a lot of people do, but the reality is I know two vegan families who have adopted. That is it. And I know so many vegans. Um, so, so that is, that is the ideal. I feel that is the ideal, but I don't know if everybody's going to be able to live up to that ideal. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, so I think it's important to have vegan families just walking the walk and being examples and sharing their their information, their wisdom, their knowledge. You know, it, it's interesting that you, you bring up, you know, you, the adoption thing. And, and as being a vegan parent who has looked at adoption and is con- currently considering adoption, people don't realize the process, the cost and how hard it actually is to yeah. adopt sometimes. Yeah. Like it, it's not just as easy as, oh, you want a kid just to adopt. It's not it's not like you can go just adopt immediately. It's very, very rigorous also, if process. Also, if you've done any CD, you know, if you've done any civil disobedience, mm-hmm. if, you've done, if you've been arrested, if you've done anything like that, it goes on your record and they're going to give you flack for it. Mm-hmm. Or they'll just discount you or, you you know, you can't do it. We get uh, we get a, a mark ticked against us for not being religious. Like, oh, you don't have, you know, realist affiliation. Boom. That's another tick against you. There's you so many things. No, yeah, it's it's crazy here. Yeah. 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 My cousins, they are not vegan. Um, they're actually very Christian. Um, they're in Wausau, uh, Wisconsin. They are, they're just leaving Haiti now. They're adopting a five-year-old girl, um, who is a survivor of, well, I think she's a survivor. No, I think she is. Yeah. The earthquake. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm, I'm really, I'm really impressed with them, but it's no joke. It's no joke. And, you know, it's also the aftermath, especially if the kid has attachment issues. I mean, that's years and years of therapy, which mm-hmm. I mean, power to those who, who can do it and who do who do do it. They are amazing people. They're heroes in my eyes, but not everyone's up for that. So it's amazing that you're even looking into it. I think it's fantastic. Yeah, it's a it's a lot more intensive than people think. I think the average cost of an international adoption is around thirty thousand dollars. Wow. Mm-hmm. That's incredible. Yeah, and it goes up tremendously depending where you go. Like I know China, you have to spend um, upwards of two to four weeks there while you're doing the paperwork. So just the cost of being there alone for that long. Yeah, that's right. And, you know, yeah, my cousins, they had to go to Haiti for two weeks and then Mm -hmm. they have to go home and say goodbye, which is very emotional. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, not knowing that that this girl whom they're falling in love with is really going to be their daughter or not. You know, it's it's heart wrenching. It can be so. Yeah, I'm, I met a family who they were looking at adopting um, and actually a brother and sister and I think a couple other kids. It was a couple of kids that they were looking at adopting and they were going back and forth to Peru forever. And finally, I think a dad stepped in and said, no, the adoption can't go through. And so they'd put in about you know, seven years trying to get these kids back. Wow. Yeah, it, and, it, it's, it's heart-wrenching. Um, yes. You also, you, you brought up, you know, the idea that, that as vegans, we're kind of missing a market towards, you know, that perspective lane. That's actually one of the things my wife's been trying to do um, is to get a new vegan parenting podcast up and going just to... Oh, God, yes. Yeah. Please. Yeah, and that's what we hear all the time when when it's going. When I mean, it's, I mean, it. it's in the works. I was a part of our collective currently. Uh, yeah. It's just um, it's a lot of work. It's a lot of work to yeah. do a podcast. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, just editing. I mean, oh god, Produ- and producing is glorified problem solving. Also, I mean, you know, mm-hmm. it's one thing after the other. Oh, okay, it's just ideas, creative ideas, and then roadblocks, and then problem solving, and just time. It's just time. So what what were some of the problems you had with Vegucated? Well, the fact that I had never taken a film class <laughs> <laughs> were slight challenges. Um, 
Yeah. I, you know, like I didn't pay attention to the legal stuff at first. So then I had to go back and do that way later and get everybody to sign releases later. And that's like pulling teeth. I mean, even the crew, I had to get releases and blah, um, but that's not a big deal. I mean, uh, aside from the storytelling part, like just the technical crap, you know, just I was crying into my Final Cut Pro manuals more than once, <laughs> uh, you know, and um, fundraising, you know, people don't realize the average documentary costs a quarter of a million dollars Jesus. and takes five years wow. to make. So, um I mean, we, every birthday, you know, holiday, uh, wedding, you know, our wedding was, I mean, they were all fundraisers for the film. And, um, so, and it was, you know, a lot of our own money and anyway, so that was, that was a big challenge. Just how expensive it was, how expensive it was. I bet. I'm I'm glad you brought up Final Cut Pro because it's a fucking nightmare sometimes. (laughs) <laughs> yeah yeah they have it has these little quirks and glitches and you're like what also but when i you know i didn't understand different frame rates i didn't understand different aspect ratios mm-hmm. i mean there's this whole technical side when i started it that i was just clueless about so in you know the less you do in the in the front end the more work you have to do in the back end to to fix it so mm-hmm. That's that's another reason why the film did take seven years um, to make from conception to finish, just to raise all that money. You know, we'd get to a certain place and I'd be like, oh, we need to pay animators. OK, let's do another fundraiser, you know. <laughs> um, so. So the, yeah. the, the three people in it, have they ever um, come and like said they regretted being in it? Never, never. No, never. They've. It's been life changing and, and they've actually changed, you know, in, mm-hmm. in along in their journey. Um, I don't know if I want to give spoiler alerts. Should I give spoiler alerts? I'm all about spoilers. Yes. Okay. All right. So spoilers. All right. So Tesla at the end of the film, she was dating this guy, Harry, and he was, you know, very skeptical. And then they ended up, really getting together. They got engaged. They got married and he works for, I think it's Con Edison, you know, the power company or maybe Mm -hmm. the cable company. I don't know, but he does utilities and he was, um, not super supportive of her being vegetarian. Um, and she, she did fall off the wagon there for a while. And then when he was out on a job one day, it was near a halal slaughterhouse. You know, they have these little live markets in the city. Yeah. And yeah. he just heard the screams of the animals and just was creeped out and came home. Tesla had made like a meat lasagna and he was like, I'm not going to eat that. So he's, so he, you know, he drinks non dairy milk and he is um, mostly vegetarian now. Sometimes he isn't, but mostly he's vegetarian and, and she is too. She was really thrilled because she went to law school and it was, um, a Jewish law school. So they kept kosher. So their cafeteria was vegetarian because, you know, it's either meat or cheese, you know, dairy. So they just, everything was dairy. Mm -hmm. So that was good. And then Ellen, um, you know, she was the single, she was a single mom. Debbie really was a fantastic support because Debbie was as into it as Ellen was. And they really supported each other, you know, in their little family unit. And even Mark, Um, made started to make healthier choices and i believe debbie's now at barnard college and um still vegetarian and then brian had fallen off the wagon because he started dating this girl who was um not at all not even vegetarian and he was i guess pescategan (laughs) pescategan (laughs) so he except for fish but then he came to our uh screening at the ar conference you know, AR 2011 and Mm -hmm. he saw the screening, which was packed. And he was like, what am I doing? And it just snapped him back to where he was that summer when we shot it. And, you know, just seeing the footage, he was just like, what am I doing? So he went from Pescategan back to vegan and, um, broke up with that girl. And now he's, uh, with a new girlfriend and they're expecting a little vegan baby. So that is awesome. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, they've all had their journey and they've all, found it incredibly meaningful 
So do you still keep in touch with them on a frequent basis? I do with, you know, we had a reunion last, not this past summer, but last summer, everybody came to New York and we, we recorded a sort of where are they now series. Um, you know, it's with hard, it's hard with a little kid. I just, I just am not as social, <laughs> just not. So it's hard to see them as much because Tesla is in town. Ellen is in town. So I actually saw Debbie probably about four months ago, you know, Ellen's daughter. Mm -hmm. Um, and yeah, so I, I do, but not as, not as often as I'd like to. I find it interesting that, um, two of them both brought on challenges because of like, possibly because of relationships. Like it's hard, hard to have that relationship with someone who isn't Mm -hmm. on that same wavelength. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't know how people can ever do it. I've, was always that snob. I've never dated someone who wasn't vegan in my whole life. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, see, you're a dude. You're lucky you can do that. Girls can't do that. There aren't enough of you. There see, are not enough of you. We're just the opposite here. I swear there's more male vegans in Utah than, than female. Mm-hmm. No way. Oh, yeah. It's, yeah, I would say that for sure. Well, statistically, it's been proven that there are way more women than men. It, especially in the activist community here it's a way more um adrenaline based i should say <laughs> i was trying to find a nice way of saying you know too much testosterone yeah yes. But, yeah well, yes yes it, it, it's a negative it's really it's bad a, it it's really bad for negative. the scene here mm-hmm. yeah right so interesting i was gonna say one of my favorite scenes was with tesla um and her friend in the restaurant when she brought up fish. Right. I don't do, remember this scene, Jordan. I do. I do. It was her cousin. It was okay. her cousin. That was her cousin. Oh, I remember every scene. I can quote you every, <laughs> 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 it, you know, I'm not joking 700 times. I mean, yeah. I just, I really enjoyed like seeing her develop that, um, that thought process and it's on her own. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, she started to have her own voice, and she became an ad- an advocate. Mm-hmm. It was fun to see that her take on that role. Yeah, it was. And that's what's awesome about this movie, really. <laughs> Thank so you. What What future projects are you working on? Well, um, working on is a loose term. Um, <laughs> let's say I'll say percolating on. Okay. Um, well, I want to do a. Uh, a vegan baby toddler kid cookbook um, that will be the companion piece to a vegan family documentary. So it'll be like Vegucated Family Edition, basically. Hmm. So like converting a whole family at once or? I'm not going to tell you because oh. I have to give it away, but um, <laughs> I, it's a lot like the first vegetated, but with families. Awesome. Well, you got me interested. Awesome. So, so how yeah. long do we have to wait for this percolation oh, process? Uh, 14 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Because I mean, I, you know, Gabriel is like more than full time right now. And, you know, first when he starts preschool next year, he's going to have two mornings for three hours where I'll be able to go home, take a shower, answer three emails, and then go back and pick them up. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll, you know, we'll see. But it's, I cannot do a film and a book at once, but I think they there needs to be a book along with the film to really offer the support because there just aren't enough vegan kids uh, books out there and cookbooks. There are family cookbooks out there, but there aren't you know, with baby food, toddler food and all that jazz. So, mm-hmm. um, so I want to do that. So I'm going to, I'm going to start with that first. So I've, I've started on the proposal. I'm trying to find an agent. Um, and then once he's in school full time, I'll be able to start on the movie because the movie is, it's just so much work, so mm-hmm. much work, man, as a vegan parent, who's looked for those vegan kids cookbooks, there is nothing, no. nothing. Yeah. Just nothing. So I that that'll be great. That'll be that'll be super great. I'm actually really excited about that. Oh good. Oh, I'm glad to hear it. Yeah. I mean 
I'm also kind of telling people this to force myself to do it because I'm like, oh, well, I said I did it. <laughs> I said, you do it. You do it. You know? Now it has to exist. Now it has to exist. <laughs> yeah. So have you, have you ever run, being, being a vegan parent, have you run any problems with like pediatricians or anything like that yet? Um, no, I've been really pleasantly surprised. Um, I've been really pleasantly surprised. My, our pediatrician was, was actually less worried because Gabriel's, um, kind of little, but so are my husband and I. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, there was a time, you know, I guess he was born at whatever percentile height, which I think was wrong because he just had a cone head. But um, he was like, you know, 75th percentile in height, which wasn't real. So I think he was probably 50th percentile. And now he's like 25th. And, you know, I don't remember which pediatrician appointment I was at where I was like, oh, my God, what does that mean? You know, is he not getting this? Is he not getting that? And the pediatrician was not worried. I was the one who was worried. And she she looked at me, she was like, well, okay, well, how tall are you guys? And I was like, oh, well, you know, and, you know, I was like, five, five, my husband's five, seven. And we looked it up and David's in the 25th percentile for height. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, you know, so our son is, you know. Um, also, I have read, there actually isn't that much, there isn't, there aren't that many studies on vegan kids growth, et cetera. But mm -hmm. the one that is that I do know about, um, was based on kids who were raised vegan at the farm in the, in that hippie commune in Tennessee. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, it said that until they're about four or five, they are going to be a little bit, um, they generally are a little bit smaller than their peers, but then around four or five, they tend to even out more. Um, but I don't think Gabriel will because we're not big people. So um, I don't know. Anyway, so the point is our pediatrician was not worried. I was worried just because I, you know, you as a parent, you worry. That's what you do. That's what you do. Um, but I conferred with Dr. Furman. Oh, also because I realized that Gabriel has a little bit of a soy sensitivity like I do. Mm -hmm. So I was giving him, you know, uh, I weaned him onto soy milk, you know, after one and he he was not a big nurser, but I did do exclusively breast milk until he was one. And then I started to integrate soy milk and he just had a constant rash and all this diarrhea. And then I was like, wait a minute, I don't digest soy very well. Let me see what happens. Within a day, it cleared up once I stopped giving him soy within a day. Oh, wow. So I was like, okay. So then I confer, I had to confer with Furman because rice milk and almond milk and hemp milk don't have enough protein and fat, coconut milk. Mm -hmm. Don't have enough protein and fat in them alone to sustain, you know, a little bitty. Mm -hmm. So Furman said, add um, dates and hemp seeds and almonds to, you know, whatever milk you have, like almond or whatever hemp, and in your Vitamix and just blend it for, you know, five minutes or, you know, two minutes or something so that it's like a, you know, and the Vitamix is so amazing. It's just pulverizes that stuff. So... <laughs> Um, I get, yeah, unsweetened, <clears throat> unsweetened, um, almond milk. And then I add the dates and the hemp seeds and I make it fresh every morning. And I remember when I was, I was like, Oh, I have to make it fresh every morning. <laughs> now it's just part of a routine. Like who cares? Mm -hmm. You know, and it tastes really good and he loves it. And then he also said, Furman said, just go ahead and put cashew cream in everything. Like if, if you're worried that, you know, if you're giving him, um, sauce like a spaghetti sauce you know with broccoli put throw some cashew cream in. if you're making my casserole throw cashew cashew cream in it so i do that you know for extra fat and protein so there are ways of troubleshooting you know if you're if your kid is allergic to this or doesn't tolerate that you know of of giving them what they need i find it interesting that you the, the whole height thing with you because we had the same thing where my wife was freaking out when my my daughter from pretty much birth maintained like i think it was like 18 or 19th percentile in height yeah. and has yeah. always maintained that and every single time she talked to the pediatrician about it he's just like you're five one your husband's <laughs> five seven what do you expect here like <laughs> that's hilarious yeah what yeah exactly also we were thin kids and mm -hmm. um gabriel's like yeah, he's 20th percentile for weight, but he's, gen yeah, he bounces between 10th and 20th 
for weight. And, you know, that's pretty thin, but I was looking at pictures of my husband, um, uh, earlier this year and he was, I mean, he was a stick. And he said that when he would take off his clothes in gym class or whatever, people would worry. They would be like, <laughs> are you okay? So, and now he's fine. Now he's like always trying to lose weight, you know. But um, but um, So, of course, you know, Gabriel's slender. Also, you know, vegan kids do tend to be a little more slender, which yeah. is good. So, you know, it's easy to freak out when they're little and you're around all these chubby babies um, and think it has to do with veganism when – you know, it may have a little bit to do with veganism, but by and large, it's hereditary. And the benefits of them eating, um, you know, a plant-based diet down the down the road and loving broccoli and loving asparagus and eating all these, you know, delicious, healthy, that far outweighs any, you know, tiny difference in percentile in, you know, in what their height could be as two-year-olds. So that's that's where I've come that's where I've come. So it sounds like you guys had a similar experience. Oh, and I'm sure you've also met kids, vegan kids who are, you know, who are like super huge and chubby. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right? <laughs> oh, yeah. I have I mean, my gosh, there was uh, my best friend is Chloe Jo Davis from Girly Girl Army, and she has two vegan boys. And um, her son is named Freedom. Her other son is Panther. And, you know, Panther is 50th percentile on everything. Freedom was... I think at like seven months, he was like 20 pounds. Oh. I mean, he was huge. That's he still huge. has cellulite. And he's a vegan kid. Wow. He's a vegan two-year-old. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. yeah so. it, it was really reassuring, you know, that, uh, cause I, it's one of those things as soon as, you know, she got pregnant, it was like, okay, I want to read everything that there's out there. Let's yes. just make sure that we, you know, and really, it came down to, oh, you really don't have to do that much. It's not really that difficult. No, you don't have to be, you know, people think you have to, like, become a, you know, nutritionist, to get a degree in nutrition to raise a vegan kid. And you don't. You just have to be mindful. As of, every parent should be. Yes, just, as yeah. every parent should, should yeah. be. As every parent should be. Well, this, is, this has been a lot of fun. We're already at an hour. That's crazy. Um, oh, my gosh. So uh, how can people follow your work and, and uh, find out when these awesome new cookbooks and family documentaries coming out. <laughs> well, um, they can sign up for our newsletter on getveducated.com. We have a very active uh, Facebook page and Twitter feed. So um, please like us and follow us there as well. Um, you can friend me on Facebook. Um, and uh, so, yeah, yeah, you know, we're online. So please, yeah, please do stay in touch. Well, uh, we end every episode saying fuck shit damn. Would you mind saying it for us this week? Hell yes. <laughs> okay. Fuck shit damn. Awesome. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. Thank you guys. This was super fun. You guys are awesome. Have All a right. wonderful Thanks. evening. You too. Okay. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. This week you heard Steppin Razor by Craddy. Right now you're listening to The Edge by Cohen Sound. And as always, El Comedantes, which side are you on? Every week we tell you to do this. Just do it. iTunes. Rate and review us. And if you aren't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. And anyone who has a, a new model iPhone or have been upgraded to the newer OS has the podcast app already on their phone. So just be like, hey, let me check out your new phone. You douchebag for owning an, an iPhone. <laughs> and uh, subscribe subscribe, the, subscribe to our show. And then when phone. you're done calling them a douchebag, grab your iPhone and subscribe. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> That's how it works, right? Yeah. Yeah. Also, um, you can keep in touch with us on our social media. We have many things posted there that we don't post or talk about on the show so if you go to whichsidepodcast.com click on the social tab and be our friends we have an LO we haven't set it up though but we're there but I, I heard that they're owned by a venture capitalist are they? yeah but what the f- they're all fucking owned by I know shit fuck social we need like a, a true anarchist social media platform but, but until then <laughs> follow us on Facebook and Twitter 
and Instagram and Tumblr and Google Plus, kind of. I mean, you could. There's, I mean, we don't do anything with it. <laughs> oh, fuck shit down, man. Exactly. Witch Side is produced by the Witch Side Media Collective. Uh-huh.